An outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus in Guinea has already killed dozens, and that toll could rise. It demonstrates the potential to strike across the African continent. To discuss this frightening development, we are joined now by Ebola expert Dr. Armin Spracker. He's from Doctors Without Borders, also known as Médecins Sans Frontières. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Spracker. My pleasure. Um, qu quickly and without making us too ill, uh, t tell us uh, about the distinctive features of Ebola. Well, uh, unfortunately, Ebola starts out without many distinctive features. It's a fever, vague flu-like illness, uh, aches and pains everywhere. It goes on to cause vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, for some patients, a couple of days after that, they'll start having a bit of bleeding around the gums, maybe from the nose. And the unlucky ones will go into a shock-like state and, and die. And this is probably one of the reasons that Ebola goes unnoticed in the difficult places in Africa where it crops up because it doesn't have a distinctive look to it. What is the hallmark of Ebola is unfortunately that caregivers then start dying, family members start dying, healthcare workers start dying, and that's when we know that something really nasty is going on. And this first emerged in the Congo in, in the mid-70s, 1976. Um, we're seeing this in Guinea now. Why is this a particularly worrying event that we're seeing already dozens dead? Well, it, it's the first time that Guinea has had uh, Ebola, and that means that the range of the virus has spread. Uh, presumably that's because the uh, vector of the virus, the fruit-eating bats that carry it, have brought it to Guinea, and that's going to cause them a problem. Uh, they already have Lassa fever in that area, which is a different hemorrhagic fever, so they're uh, uh, twice unlucky, unfortunately. So um, th this is transmitted through uh, exchange of, of, of fluids, right? It can be, be, be urine and, and, and things like that. Is cleanliness something that could help stop the spread of this? Uh, I, I know that uh, Guinea is, is one of the poorest nations in the world. Yeah, that's one of the first things we do when we get into the field during an outbreak is make sure that the health care providers in the health centers and the hospitals reinforce their infection control procedures, uh, wearing uh, protective gloves, making sure that everybody's washing their hands, um, and then creating a safe space in which we can care for these patients. Now, one of the things I understand is that the, once someone has this, uh, it, it, the f fatality rate is very high. It can be up to 90% uh, fatalities of people who get infected. Yeah, uh, the fa case fatality ratio depends on which species of Ebola we're dealing with. And in the, fortunately, in the case in Guinea, they have Ebola Zaire, which is the worst of the, of the species. And the case fatality does get up to 90% with this one. Okay, 90%, not very good. And uh, do you think this will be contained in, within Guinea and not spread any further? I think that's everybody's worry, right? It just spreads. Well, unfortunately, the place where this outbreak is occurring in Guinea is a bit of a crossroads, and it's a very short distance across the borders to Liberia and Sierra Leone. And it looks like cases have already spread across those borders, um, although we don't have a, a good understanding of how far uh, the outbreak has gone across those borders. But there are already cases that are likely there. That being said, nothing has been confirmed yet because the field laboratories aren't in place uh, and they're going to go get samples from these patients to find out if this is truly Ebola or not. Okay, well, it looks like uh, Medicine Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, has a lot of work ahead of it. Thank you very much, Dr. Armin Sprecher. We appreciate your time. My pleasure.